And now our Freedom to Flourish series brought to you by Coke Industries. Common sense tells us that uh, surgeons and architects need proper licensing to ensure that they're truly qualified. What about dance instructors, hair braiders, manicurists? The rules covering so-called occupational licensing vary greatly state to state. Sometimes the licenses truly protect consumers from bad actors, but in other cases, government licenses seem to only protect industry insiders from competition. Camilla Taylor's beauty salon is on the rise, despite government licensing rules that are twisting her in knots. Those are things that you have to consistently pay to renew your licensing to keep it up. Hey, how are you? How are you? Building her business has been a challenge in Johnstown, Pennsylvania, where the per capita income is just $25,000. State licensing fees don't help. It's all about money. Money is involved. She has to undergo a background check every two years. And to be a licensed hair braider in Pennsylvania, one must complete 300 hours of training for a skill that's often passed down in families through generations. To have so much time and so much money just to basically put a license on something that you already have, it could be a little bit redundant. At nearby St. Francis University, Ed Timmons heads the Knee Center, which warns the public about the scale, cost, and impact of occupational or workplace licensing. There are approximately 1,100 occupations that are licensed in at least one state. Timmons says that in the early 1950s, just 5% of the U.S. workforce was required to obtain a license. Today, that number is more than one in five, perhaps as high as 25% of the workforce requiring a license to work. Some licenses seem to defy logic. In some states, licenses are required to sell flowers or cemetery plots. In Kentucky, horse masseuses must get licensed via a four-year veterinary school degree. It's hard to justify why an individual would need to become a veterinarian just to massage a horse. Consumer advocates say occupational licenses often protect the public and ensure expertise. But Timmons says sometimes the rules harm small businesses and price newcomers out of the job market. Occupational licensing raises prices for consumers. It also potentially keeps individuals who are looking to enter a new profession from doing so. Joining me now is Clark Neely of the Cato Institute. Cato promotes adherence to free markets with fewer regulations and limited government. Right up my alley. Welcome, Clark. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be here. So let, let's start with this. Uh, what are some of the dumbest regulations, other than what we've already seen, that you've come across or that you know about? Just to give people a full sense of the, the, the problem, the scope and scale of there, this regulatory <laughs> issue. There are so many to choose from, but a couple of them. Um, in Louisiana, you actually have to have a government license to sell floral arrangements. It's illegal to do that unless they give you permission. In Florida, uh, Louisiana, and Nevada, you have to have a college degree uh, and a government license to be an interior designer. Uh, there are many states uh, where you have to have, the, one of the craziest professions I've ever seen is um, there are people who file down horses' teeth. Horses' teeth grow throughout their lifetime, they need to be filed down. They want you to go to four years of veterinary school just to do that. Um, the list goes on and on. So we do know there are some professions, as we noted, where licensing seems like a sensible idea. You probably don't want somebody doing open heart surgery just because they think they've read a few books on it. Uh, how can government effectively draw those lines? How do you recommend that states in particular don't do things that are foolish other than just say, don't do things that are foolish. Right. So I think one of the most important things to realize is that occupational licensing is basically useless. Um, it really doesn't protect us. I'm a lawyer, and if you think that occupational licensing keeps incompetent lawyers out of the field, I'm here to tell you that you're wrong. Um, mostly what state bars do is they try to keep um, people from per competing with lawyers. They don't really do a very good job of getting bad lawyers out of the profession. So that's point one. There's not that much at stake here when it comes to government regulation. If we had no occupational licensing whatsoever, you know what you would do? You would go online and you would look and you would try to figure out who's a good doctor, who's a good lawyer based on 
their comments and their so, so you believe you think that this licensing should just be gone across the board well my position is i don't think it does any good there's no okay. real evidence that it does anything good but if you want to license doctors and lawyers and it makes you feel better that's fine uh, but what we want to get rid of is, is licensing of things like hair braiders and interior designers that is obviously anti-competitive it seems like that's so obvious that there must be another rationale behind it other than making sure the consumer only gets the best Clearly, regulations can be anti-competitive, favoring incumbents in the business world, and also there must be costs, and with that, taxes associated with this. What can you tell us about that component? It, everything you just said is exactly right. Take, take Florida, for example. Um, there's a very good reason why Florida licenses interior designers, and it's not to protect consumers. It's because the, the best interior designers in the country live in New York and Los Angeles, but there's a lot of really great work to do in Florida, and Florida interior designers don't want to share that work with people from outside the state. So how do you prevent that competition from coming in? you put up a, an occupational So this is state-by-state state protectionism absolutely, in a sense. Absolutely, absolutely. And, and, and keep in mind, this is very expensive for us as a country. Occupational licensing costs about $200 billion, and um, it probably has resulted in the loss of about 3 million jobs. So we are shooting ourselves in the foot with unnecessary licensing. Wow. Clark, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate it. My pleasure. Next on Rising, stripping security clearances from former top officials. Should the president do it? The Hill's Joe Concha, the conch, indeed, he weighs in. And later, schools nationwide are turning down free doses of a life-saving drug. The misconception that could be to blame. We'll explain more before we go.